بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم والحمد لله رب العالمين حمد الشاكرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear uh, brothers, of course, uh, my uh, thankfulness and appreciation, number one, for our elderly brothers here, whom I am honored to speak uh, in front of, and going all the way from the elderly to the youngest, who will take the banner after we are gone from here, and hopefully they will be able to live in uh, better environments and better life with better economic system and social system and political system than the ones that we all had to live uh, through. Uh, the talk about economic system, sometimes one of the brothers probably would say, what does this have to do with me? Why am I listening? Why am I, why am I sitting here? Especially the young ones coming from the school. This is beyond my head. It's not something that I even learn in school or I have to go to a specific uh, specialty in college in order to understand that. But I chose to bring this chart here so I can explain why this is of interest to us. Right at the top here, those who can see it, uh, actually this is called the US debt clock which shows the amount of debt a country or the state owes in general, and it's, fl it's a flying in, in seconds, at the level of seconds it's increasing, and it has for so many other countries. Now, on the next line there, there's called the GDP. Now, the GDP is the gross domestic uh, uh, product. Actually, let me give it another term, especially for, what's your name? Ibrahim, uh, is your father working? No, no? or in brothers. your brothers, okay. This is what your brothers are doing. That's the money that your brothers are earning, or we are earning. That's our gross domestic product. That's our earning. That's what we make. That's what we make in our daily life in order to buy bread and uh, do schooling for you, the, the, the young ones, and for us, uh, the ones who are retired, we have worked all our life, and that's, it's increasing by the minute, by the second, but the one on the left, the debt is increasing faster, which means, which means someone is borrowing money and making uh, big loans and making debt on our account. I'm not borrowing money. At some point I stopped, maybe, maybe I was borrowing money at some, I'm not. But the money that I'm making, I'm producing, that's my product. As engineer, as doctor, here we have few doctors who are making some money. We have engineers, we have technicians, we have uh, merchants, we have people who have, who have their own businesses. That's what the so-called the gross national product, GNP, or gross domestic product. This is what we as domestic people, that's what we make. And there is a debt against our money. If I am at home, I'm a household keeper, I'm the parent, and then uh, let's say I'm a typical American, not someone who is following the rules of Islam in general, so I'm, make, I'm borrowing money uh, with interest to buy a car, to buy a house, to, buy, to, to even to do vacations. This is how typical American lifestyle. They have so 10, 15 different credit cards they buy with with a card that's a plastic one, the money that he doesn't own, the things that he doesn't need, from a place that he doesn't even know these days. That's what the loans are. So I'm making lots of money and there is a debt against my money. So whatever I'm making is not totally mine because there is a loan. So here, what I put here just to show, usually an economic system deals with this issue. So that's why I'm interested. That's why I'm concerned. That's why it has to do with me. Otherwise, we would be talking about something that goes beyond my head or your head. But this is our daily life. This is our daily income. This is our labor. This is our sweat. And sometimes this is our blood because some people, they die while they are trying to make some, some earning. Especially those who work in mines, 
those who work in very hard conditions, those who get mistreated in some places and they get uh, diseases like cancer, heart attacks, all types of things because of discrimination against them in the workplace and then goes home frustrated, gets a heart attack and dies, actually dies trying to earn a buck for his family. That's exactly what the economic system is about. So that's this chart here has not been put for simply uh, to get numbers, to get confused by numbers, but since you see the, the uh, uh, stuff that are, that are running, changing, the clock on the left side, which runs very fast, this is the accumulated debt. And for the United States, it stands up at 22 trillion, 559 billion, 156 million, and the other numbers I cannot read because they are changing fast, faster than I can even read them. And the total money that we are making, we are making 21 trillion, which is about 1 trillion less than what we owe. Wow, that's disastrous. That by itself is disastrous. And that is for the largest economy in the world. Now, if we will talk about others, if I will scroll down and find Pakistan or Egypt or Bangladesh, we don't want to see that. We really don't want to, or Jordan or some of those, can, some of the Muslim countries, or even Turkey, the one they call it that it's flourishing and doing a lot. We don't want to see those numbers. They are disastrous. Now, this catastrophe, and I'm going a little bit backward here in this lecture, I want to show what is wrong and then to come and say how it can be done right. What is wrong, the catastrophic things that are happening in the world, today we live in something called virtual economy. The young ones, they understand that more than me. Because these are terms which they use in bitcoins, blockchain, those type of things, money, cryptography, stock markets, some of the people who have got into stock markets, that's called virtual. It's not real. Why it's virtual? Because today, I remember one time when I was at Motorola, when the stocks of Motorola collapsed, those who worked at Motorola at one point of time, there was, everything was booming and people were pushing, oh, we want to buy stocks and we used to have, as Brother Hashem says, we used to have those little sessions and say, come on brothers, you have to be careful. This is not only Islamically incorrect, but it is even economically it's incorrect because what you are buying today and you are gaining tomorrow it can collapse and fail down and you have no control over so you don't have control on what you buy or what you sell you think that you have a million stocks million stocks from let's say Motorola stocks at the time was about $50 so you have $50 million in your account that's not true that's not real, that's virtual. So the virtual economy today, which the world lives in, which means there is way much wealth, so-called number of dollars, than the real economy, the real product is. And that is caused by things that Allah Azza wa Jal and Islam has prohibited. Number one, it's riba. Riba, which is usury. They call it interest. The word interest is a good word. Because it's in my interest, something valuable. Allah Azza wa Jal called it a riba, which is translated into usury. And the riba itself, the meaning of it, the real meaning, is that the money grow on its own. You know, like when you when you put the seeds of your trees, tomatoes, beans, corn, those seeds can grow. And eventually you implant one seed of corn, it grows up, and you have the corn of corn, it has maybe about 50 or 60 pieces of seeds. That's a growth. Now, can you implant, implant a dollar, and later, two months later, it gives you five dollars, put it under the ground and water it? This is silly. I mean, you say, come on, uh, brother, give me a break. You cannot do that. But with the riba you can. With the riba, that's exactly what riba does. The riba, you implant money. 
not in the ground, but in the money of your neighbor, in the money of your neighbor or the one who took a loan from you, and then you start gaining dollars and money without making any product. That's the riba. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal, He called it, وَمَا آتَيْتُمْ مِنْ riba لِيَرْبُوَ فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ The riba, the increase in money, which you, which you allow it to grow on the account of the money of other people, Allah Azza wa Jal will not accept it. So a riba, a riba, it is the growth of money without product, without labor. And that's what the bankers do. The bankers, he gives you $1,000, he gets back $1,100. The hundred extra, those hundred dollars, he had done zero effort for them. And, and actually, what he does, he gives you 900 and keeps 100. So let's put it this way. And if you use the $900 to make some product or to do something, where does the other $100 come from? You didn't have them. You did not get them. That's called riba. Now, if it's only one person doing it, it may not be visible. But if the entire country is based on that, the entire economy is based on that, then eventually you will have billions or trillions of dollars that have been accumulated and that have been counted as numbers, as money, without products, without labor, without real value. That's called virtual. That's called virtual. And there is the other part of this catastrophe is called the hoarding. Yesterday we were in a very, very productive meeting when one, with one of the professors of economy from Bangladesh, his name Ata'ul Haq, wrote about 15 books in economy. We were blessed by meeting him, me, and some of the brothers who are in this, in this hall. And we were talking about some of the flaws. What is it that caused an economy, an economy not to grow as fast as the money does? So that quite often we say the growth of our economy, products, tomatoes, grains, corn, cards, uh, automobiles, uh, planes, whatever, those are our products. They are not growing. What's happening? Well, there is part of the money does not go in the cycle of production. You have 100 bucks in your pocket. You take 20 of them, you put them somewhere out, you will never use them. So 80 of them only, which is 80% goes in the production cycle. What's the production cycle? You go to the grocery store, you buy something. You go to the coffee shop, you buy something. So your money circulates. The circulation of money in the production cycle, this is how economy grows. That's how life gets going on. Now, if you keep 20 of them in your pocket, you hold, you hoard it. And there is an interest, interesting in the, in, the, in the phonology here. Hoard and hold. It's almost the same. Sometimes if I say you hoard it, we think the brother is saying you hold it. But it's, it means the same. You hold it with an L away from the production cycle. This is called hoarding. H-O-A-R-D-S. It's put in there, hoarding. In Arabic, it's called kens. Allah Azza wa Jalla, Azza wa Jalla called it kens. When you make a kens, a money that's supposed to go in the production cycle, you keep it aside, so this allows your economy not to grow as much as your money is. You have more money than what the economy is. So that's the second problem. The first one, a riba, Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned what riba is, it's the growth of money on behalf of the money of other people, but He called it a disaster, and that's why He wages war against it. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, leave the riba, don't come close to it, don't do it, and if you don't refrain from riba, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ I will wage a war, a war against you, Allah Azza wa Jal, not me, not me, not the World Bank, not the IMF, not the Federal Reserve, not the leftist, as every time you say something a critical, Trump would come say, oh, you are leftist. 
Democrats are leftists. Anyone who speaks anything positive, I'm not going to say negative, positive against, because positive against means negative. But I'm not going to use the word negative. Anyone who says positive against the, the wrongdoing of the system, he will start labeling you. Leftist, terrorist, uh, racist, whatever. But the truth of the matter, Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is waging this war. فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And the third one, the gold and silver. Brothers, you have some dollar bills here. How much I have? That's all I have. <laughs> this is it's a dollar bill. You have in your pockets, in your accounts. Now, this is a mere paper that's printed without any cover. At any point of time, any point of time, it doesn't matter when, to today, tomorrow, a year later, 100 years, I don't, it doesn't matter. At any point of time, someone with authority will tarnish this, will say, this has no value anymore. It's gone. It becomes a piece of paper. It's not even worth wiping your hands with, be, with because it's dirty. It's not clean. It has been circulated among thousands of hands. It's not even worth. You cannot even, you cannot even wipe some dirt from your hands with this. It has no coverage whatsoever. In the past, until 1971, this bill and every other bill, like the rupee, like the pound, like the francs, like the dinars, were covered by gold. Gold is a precious material. It's a material that Allah Azza wa Jal created in certain quantities, the balanced quantity. In the world, beneath the ground, he made it there. And it has certain characteristics that makes it unique. I'm not going to go into the science of materials. There are engineers of materials here who know that better than me, what type of qualities and characteristics the gold has or the silver. But those are precious materials that used to cover the money. So at any point of time, this paper will always be converted into something called gold or silver. 1971, Nixon administration, they said no more. No more. Our dollars will be printed based on the trust of the people in us. But the trust is gone. Who's going to trust? Who's going to trust later on or even in the past? A country or a person or an authority that we say, we see in front of our own eyes that they are going against the interest of the people. Nationally, locally, and, and globally. And globally. We are sanctioning China, Iran, uh, some Arab countries, uh, Russia. We are sanctioning ourselves. We are saying, you go home. We have seen that, telling a congresswoman, go home, go back to your country. What do you mean go back? Go back where? The world is mine. The world is mine. The world is yours. There is nothing called your world or my world. This world is created by Allah Azza wa Jal, not by this man or that man, this president or that president. So at any point of time, the people are losing trust. So what trust do I have in this dollar? Zero, because it's not backed by gold. And as I said, there was a time when it was backed by gold until 1971 for some political and economic reasons. The government of Richard Nixon decided to abandon a treaty called Britain Woods Treaty. For those of you who go, who take 101 economy, macroeconomy, you could probably see it somewhere and pass a quiz on that, but remember it. It's a very, it's a very decisive moment in the history of the in the in the in the economic history of the world. When the Nixon administration decided to break the barrier, to break the bond between the dollar, between money, currency, and the gold. Now, that said, there is yet one more thing. So these are the I would call them the pillars of catastrophe. We have pillars of prosperity. We have pillars of growth. We have pillars of Islam. Like Al-Hajj is one of them that we are going through these days. But there are pillars of catastrophe. 
which means if you have them, then you will have a catastrophe in your home, in your state, in your world. The last one is what is called the virtual values of things. Stocks, which means the value, what's called the non-real value of things. You take a company, whether it's Motorola, Lucent when it was, IBM, uh, GM, Ford, and you all, many of you have seen the 2008-2010 crisis, and you, the guys who are, uh, the young men who are uh, still growing, they have not seen that, but you read about it. But before you read about it, you will see one more coming up, and you will, you will witness it in your life probably within some time, months, maybe a couple of years, few years, but you will witness that, where you will, they will say, oh, the stock market collapsed. What do you mean the stock market collapsed? It means that there was a value associated with something called the stock. Stock is a piece of paper you get, it's a bond, saying that this piece of value has uh, a value of $50. It belongs to Intel or Apple now it's booming because of the iPhone and the uh, applications on it or maybe Samsung. It's worth 20, 50, 100, 200, 300, 400 dollars, whatever. And then out of a sudden you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, come on, let's try to sell. What's going on? Stock market is crashing, it's going down. What, what does that mean? It means the piece of paper in front of you, just like this dollar, would be tarnished at one point of time. That also, that piece of paper or that piece of something on your iPhone or on your phone, on your application, it's no longer a paper, it says it crashed. The value has gone down from $100 to 10 Or you rush, you try to sell something. By the time you open your computer and try to do sell this, oh, it's already down to a dollar. Oh, God, dollar, what can I do with this? I have 1,000 of them. They, I bought them for about $50,000. No, it's only 1,000. You can't even get the $1,000. Because by the time you start putting it on the system, there are million other people are trying to do the same. All the computers get blocked get blocked, you cannot even go through because there is a panic. Everybody trying to do the same, servers are down, no one can respond to you, and then you find yourself, they are worth zero. They are worth zero. This is not a fantasy. I'm not saying things which are out of the blue. I know there are brothers here, Brother Mal, can you testify to this? You, you are in this, he's a blogger. This is one of the brothers who came from Canada to listen and to discuss this. He's a blogger on economic system of Islam and capitalism, and he deals with this all the time. So at one point of time, get to meet him and see his blog. Has lots of information on this. I'm, you could testify to what I'm saying, correct? 100%. Okay. So the idea here is, the catastrophe that we are talking about is right at the door. It's not remote. It is just not entering. Sometimes you have someone at the door, he's still not knocking, but he's there. He could knock and enter at any point of time. The catastrophe I am talking about is right at the doorsteps of the world at large, not only America, because if it knocks at the door of America, it knocks down everything else. Because that's one more thing. There is nothing called local economy anymore. There is nothing called local economy anymore. Every single currency in the world is tied to this guy. Wherever you go, you go on vacation somewhere or get some dollars and exchange it somewhere else, the people will appreciate that. Everything is tied to this. World banks are no longer local. Try to Google sometimes association of Chase Bank with Dutch Bank in Germany. We will find the same invest investors, the same owners, the ones who own the Golden Sachs, which are a Jewish family. They own probably 100 banks in Europe. And they are all tied together. So there is nothing called domestic. It's all global. So once it knocks down here, it knocks down everywhere else. That we have to understand. So the catastrophe, it's very simple. Sometimes they make it 
too difficult for us to understand. Allah Azza wa Jal, He did not put it in economic terms. He does not put microeconomy, macroeconomy, economy 101, 102 in the Quran. Sometimes, oh brother, you are talking about economic system in Islam. Where, where can I read economic system in Islam? I don't find that. You don't find something called political system in Islam, economic system in Islam, morals in Islam. But you find the ayat and the hadith talking about the concepts. And they are intertwined with the aqidah, with the iman. That's why when Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَإِن لَمْ تَنْتَهُوا فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If you don't stop, then await a war from Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger. So you find those, and the kins, when it says, الَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The ones who make kins of gold and silver and they do not spend it in the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal, then they will be treated harshly by Allah Azza wa Jal. You will find those. And when Allah Azza wa Jal, he talks about poverty or the money, when he says, كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ دُولَةً بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ I don't want the money to stay circulating among the hands of the few among you. That's economy. But he doesn't call it economic system. He doesn't call it distribution of wealth. He puts it in an ayah, very beautiful as the brothers were reciting here. Very beautiful to, to hear. But it talks about the same issues. The kins, the riba, the gold, the silver, the real values. Something real. Allah Azza wa Jal does not want you to be deceived today. I'll give you a piece of paper and say, this is worth $50. Why is it worth $50? Oh, because this actress, she liked this cup of coffee. So this cup of coffee becomes very valuable. So it has a painting. There's a person, famous guy, he passed by and said, wow, this is a good painting. Out of a sudden, the, the price of it goes up from 1000 maybe to $50,000. That is what we are dealing with. Now, I just want to warn one thing before I, as I said, I'm, I, for the first time I do my lecture backward. I talk about the catastrophe first. You see the, the one on the left I just saw, I just showed, the national debt and the GDP. The one on the right, this is something, something that is waiting the entire world to happen. The red line, the red line, okay, that is what the banks usually do. This is dynamic loans and financing. Every day they keep putting some money and financing cars, automobiles, industries, hospitals, uh, grocery stores, you name it, governments, wars, they finance. And the reason they do that is because someone is paying the green, the interest and service to the, to, the, to, to, to the loans. Somebody is paying, they're getting the money, so they re-loan it again. However, there is a trend. And again, bankers, those who work in banks and they know that, or in credit bureaus, they know that. That the total amount of money that the people are paying back on their loans is decreasing. Why is it decreasing? Because there are many layoffs. Many people are not working. They are not earning as much as they used to earn. Salaries are going down. Payments are, and you feel it, you know it. On the, uh, in the school, the, um, the money that is paid to you as part of the financial aid and support is going down, is less. You are not being paid as much as you were paid earlier, last year or two years ago. So the money that the people earn and the people can make is getting less. And the people who are working, real work, real jobs that makes good money is getting less. And the competition is becoming very high. And the greed of the capitalist, of the owners, is getting higher. If I can hire a robot that can do your job, I will do it. And the robot will cost me $100,000, and I can lay off maybe 1,000 employees, 
Each employee will cost me about $200,000 a year, including insurance, including, including all of these things. Oh man, I am saving about $20 million for the sake of a robot that I pay $100,000. Big deal, I will do it. That is natural. That's how the current economic system is. So the people who are paying on the loans, the amount of payment is going down. By the time, look at this bubble there, the, which I call it a freeze. By the time, the amount of money coming back to the banks equal or less than the money that the bank is going to give in a loan, you will have a freeze in the economic financial system in the world. You will have a freeze. No bank, no bank within the current system that Alan Greenspan was bragging about, this is a system based on interest. The interest is the driving force, okay? No bank, whether it's in America, or in Russia, or in China, or in Jordan, or in Egypt, or in Pakistan, no bank is willing to give one penny a loan if he is not getting more than he's paying. No way in the world. That's how the banks work. And it is a well-known fact, it's a well-known fact for many years already that the trend is like this. The green is coming down to meet the red. By the time, which I call the rendezvous, when the time they meet, which means, and this is at a global level, it's not, now on, on single bank's basis, it happens every day. And banks close right and left. Just read the articles, go to Google. How many banks have closed today? You will find it. If you Google it now, you will find it's two banks or three banks or within a week or within a month. They will give you statistics. It's happening. But it's not happening at a very high alarming rate like it did in 2008. When the banks which had to deal with real estate, all of a sudden the majority of them failed. Then we had a collapse. But now, now the loans that we are talking about, these are the credit card loans. It's my credit card, your credit card, our daily purchases, the government credit, the daily purchases of the government. And the government is becoming unable day after day to pay the interest and the service to the loan. And the people are becoming unable to pay day after day. So the time when the total amount of money coming to the banks in form of interest and service or riba and service equals, becomes equal to the amount of money that the bank has to give out to finance your daily virtual life, you will have a freeze. And once you have a freeze, may Allah protect us from that by having our system of Islam already in place so that we can escape this uh, uh, Armageddon, if you will, that would happen. That would be a real catastrophe because it does not only impact the real estate, the housing. It impacts, it impacts the daily transactions of people buying the milk, buying the bread, having the coffee, putting gas in your car, all of this will be impacted. Banks will not be willing, will not accept to pay you or to give you a piece of loan. Now, sometimes, oh, I don't need a loan. I have my own account, you know. I'm happy. I have in my account a few thousand dollars. And I have my ATM card. I don't need to get a loan. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Why? Because once I use this, which is my ATM, the bank understands two things. The bank does not understand it's my money or your money. The bank understands debt and the credit. Debt and the credit. So when I scratch my card or I put it in the machine, it says, oh, Abu Talha, Dr. Muhammad Malkawi, he wants to borrow. I'm borrowing from the bank. It's my account. He wants to borrow $5 to pay for a coffee for himself and his wife. So I'm borrowing money. But the bank says, I no longer can lend the money. But it's my money. The bank doesn't understand that. The bank understands, do I, can I give a loan or not? I cannot give a loan, period. 
So I will not be able to use my own money. You will not be able to use your own money and you will be deprived of your own access to your accounts because banks do not understand that it's your money and my money. Banks understand I'm going to give you a loan out of your own account. Of course, they will get credited. They will give you the debt, but they will get credited from your account. That's when things are normal. But if things are abnormal, once the time is the freeze, it is a total freeze. It's a panic. It's a panic. That's what the world is coming to. That's why, that's why we in this hall, we say, you know what? We have a solution. We have a solution. We have something else. That's why there is a big responsibility on our shoulders. Us. That's why when Allah Azza wa Jal sent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Unzila Ilaik Litukhrijan Nasa Min Al Dulumati Ila Nur Bidn Rabbihim Ila Sirat Al Aziz Al Hamid He bestowed a responsibility on him. He said there are people living in darknesses. What is darkness means? Turn off the lights. If you turn off the light, I wouldn't even know where I am sitting, whom I'm, I'm sitting with. If I want to go out to the bathroom, I don't even know my path. Probably I will go through the window or go through an emergency exit and then all the alarms will come out. It's darkness. People are in darkness. They can fall at any point of time. They stumble and they kill one another. It's darkness. The Prophet sallallahu Allah Azza wa told the Prophet, I am revealing a book for you in order to deliver the people out of the darknesses they are in and to show them the light. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, oh, this is too much responsibility. It's too big for me. It's a huge task. Come on, are you telling me to get the people out of this misery, this miserable economy that they have built? Man, they built an economy so enormous. But it's flawed. You want me to fix that? That's too much. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had exactly the same feeling. Exactly. And he was so tense about it. So Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed Surah Al-A'raf for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told him, Alif Lam Mim Saad Kitabun Unzila Ilayk. The same ayah in Surah Ibrahim. Which he says to deliver the people. He says, Kitabun unzila ilayk, fala yakun fi sadrika harajun min. Your chest should not feel tensed about it. You should not feel tense. You should feel the responsibility. Not only that, he, an ayah later, he said, fala nas alanna alladhina ursila ilayhim. And I will indeed hold the responsible, the ones who have received the revelation. Have you heard this ayah? Probably it looks like it's the first time. Although we have read it in Ramadan, I'm pretty sure three times, those who finish the Quran. But it sounds as if it's the first time I hear that Allah Azza wa Jal is pointing a finger at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ I will hold you responsible and وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ We will hold you responsible, those who have received the message, and I will hold responsible the messenger himself. Can you see that? It's a responsibility. Now, we do see the darkness. We do see the darkness that I have just talked. It is indeed a darkness. And if you read philosophers, politicians, economists, Hundreds of them on a daily basis, on YouTube, and everywhere, they are talking about cap fail of capitalism, economic disaster. Few months, maybe a few years, they are talking about it. They are talking about this. What is the solution? Oh, we don't know. Ask anyone from MIT, from Harvard, who talk about the problem. They will talk about the problem just as I talked. Maybe... We, we put them in Islamic perspective, but they don't. But they say there is a problem. There is a catastrophe. There is something coming up. 
We don't know what it is, but it's big. It's a huge. It's disastrous. It's going to be absolutely something that we never experienced. It's not like the 1929 thing. It's not like the 2000 dot com bubble. It's not like the 2000 or the 2002k problem. It's not like the 2008. It's way beyond, way beyond. Oh, of course, I know it's way beyond. We know it's way beyond. <laughs> but what's the way out? That is where our issue comes. So I will go. What do we have? What do we have in our hands? Oh, we have Islam. What Islam? What is it when we say Islam? What is Islam that we have? Oh, the pillars of Islam. We today we have all this. We just started the season of Hajj. We just finished the season of Assam. We just did prayer, this our Rukun. And some of us have paid the zakah during Ramadan. We have the pillars of Islam. We, we do have the pillars, but what's the structure? These are the pillars that you build the house on, but what's, what's the house? What's the structure of Islam? What is it? That Allah Azza wa Jal revealed and makes you and made you responsible for the entire world with. Ah. So I put here in a very, put this chart, I tried as much as possible to summarize what is it that we have that can indeed save the world and bring into the world a decent economic political system. So let me try to stand up here and do some explanation here. Excuse me being a professor and lecturer, sometimes I have to do that. I know there are many brothers who, can, who, who do the same. Here, should I take this closer? Anyway, at the top here, we have this our aqidah, our iman. Right? We have Allah Azza wa Jal, we have our Quran, we have the Messenger. Allah chose and selects a Messenger, gives him a Quran, and together, of course, with the Quran, the Ahadith. That's the base upon which our iman, our faith, our aqidah is, correct? That's, you cannot be a Muslim without that. You cannot be a Muslim without believing in Allah Azza wa Jal as one and only one. A messenger, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and the Quran that has been given to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, this here, in order for the things that were revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran, the Hadith, to be implemented, it cannot be implemented <coughs> just by saying, I want these regulations. I take them and do them. Go read. Sometimes I want to make you engineer. I say, oh, there are about 15 books. If you read them, you become engineer. I'll distribute the 15 books and give them to about 500 students. How many of you will become engineers like that? Zero. Zero. Or doctors. I'll say, you know, I collected the best curricula that is taught at top universities in the world. Here, who wants to be a doctor? Raise your hands, young. Wants to be a doctor? No one? Oh, one, two. Oh, you are, and oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, these are, you are already a doctor, brother, come on. <laughs> so now, see, these doctors, oh, where is the curricula? Oh. Dr. Fahim, Dr. Osama, please give me the best books that you have used in your life. Oh, I will gather the books. Take these. And trust me, if you go through them, you will become a doctor. That's ridiculous. People will start laughing at me. Now, same thing. Allah Azza wa Jal gives Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Quran and the Hadith, puts them all, compile them, and say, oh, people who believe in me, take them. Once you study them, you go through them, you will be the best people, best Muslims in the world, and you all go to Jannah, and you make the world good. That's ridiculous. Otherwise, if this was true, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not have, would not have to go through what he did in Mecca. The struggle, being beaten, being deprived, being uh, the, the filth thrown into his face, then he would not, he didn't have to go through all of this if this was as simple as that. You have to build a structure for it. And 
He struggled until he was able to migrate to Medina and to put all of that within something we call a state today. But he has a masjid, he has an army, he has some judges, he has some, he can do things. So all of this, in order to function and to produce what is supposed to produce, needs a state. The Prophet did it. And when he passed away, he made sure everything was structured. So all it took is to select or elect one person to run what the Prophet had done. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he was given a bayah after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not have to install Islam from the beginning. Islam has been set up, configured based on our terminology of configuration and set up. I'm using our terms of the cell phones and the computers. It's all set up and, conf set up and configured by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now Abu Bakr had to run that system which was already in place, which is called the state. Now, under the state, what does the state do? What are its functions? The economic system comes here. Who owns what? Let me give the example about ownership. When the Muslims, they were able to conquer Persia and the Battle of Madain was done, some of the Sahaba at the time, oh, the wealth of the Persian, the Persian Empire was the wealthiest in the world was wealthier than the Romans. The gold, the silver, the palaces, the land, it was huge. So they got their pieces, and they came to Medina, happy, among them Bilal radiallahu anhu. And they got everybody his share. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he told them, oh, wait a second. If we take the spoils of war, and we distribute them among you, and eventually you pass away, and this wealth will go to your children. And then we have armies that are going to open more places than Persia. We have people who are going to work for you, for the state. How are they going to eat? Where do we get funds for them? Get back all of this wealth to the state. You don't own anything. That's a state. If the state was not there, then that money, that wealth would have been gone. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes to him, a person coming, he needs a piece of land. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I need a piece of land. I don't have a land to cultivate. He says, okay, there's a place near Ma'arib, a place in Yemen. There's big land that has been part of the Islamic state, or the Islamic land. So you go take a piece of that, few acres. Now the Sahaba tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, do you know that piece of land it includes minerals, al-malih al-ad, minerals that do not vanish, they are huge, they are mine. He says, oh, I didn't know that. Bring him back to me. He took the land back. He says, no, you cannot take that. That's ownership. Minerals, in large quantities, cannot be owned by individuals. These are the belongings of the state. That belongs to the whole Ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, الناس شركاء في ثلاث People that equally, equally have uh, uh, ownership to fire, fire now a symbol of energy. الكلاء, grasses, meadows, forests, preserves, and water resources. Today, today, the best and the largest source of energy and fire in the world, oil and gas, are in the hands of Exxon, Mobil, British Petroleum, Shell. Now, some people they think, oh, they are in the hands of the Saudis. They are not in the hands of the Saudis. They are in the hands of Aramco, and Aramco eventually owned by the cartel, the oil cartel, which are the seven sisters, they call them the seven sisters, actually they are the seven enemies, the seven moguls of the world. These are the seven thieves of the world. They are the theft of the biggest resources in the world. That's you need a state for economic system, for partnership, for ownership, monetary system to make sure that every piece of dinar and money must be covered by gold or by silver. Uh, trade relationship, fair trade, not like the trade where you have to sell at the price that I dictate you. 
And that goes back again to the oil and the gas and the, and the, and the grains and all of these products that many countries have these days. In the social system, now, although this is not related to the economic system, but those are the systems of Islam, social system, marriage, divorce, inheritance, inheritance, inheritance parenthood. Today, now, excuse my language here, when the world has gone crazy about the so-called lesbians, gays, whatever, these things are their rights of marriage, and then you start watching and seeing, like one, one day I was talking to the senator from Minnesota, and he says, the Congress just passed a law that allows the states, that was a few years ago, each state to be independent on these issues. And their local state is going to have this law. And then I said, what are you going to do about it? He said, we are going to fight it. How are you going to fight it? What means do you have to stop it? Tomorrow, your church is, used to be a priest. I said, your church is going to allow gays and lesbian marriage because if you don't do that, you lose your tax, the tax exemption status. And it did happen. I hope it would not come to our masajid at some time to say, oh, in order to keep our tax exempt status, then we have to do that. But anyway, Islam that produces justice here needs to have this structure. The messenger, a hadith, the Quran from Allah Azza wa Jal, and of course the ibadat and the moral values, these are the supporting factors. You know, supporting factors to allow you to implement these. When you read about Saum, Allah Azza wa says, I want you to make Saum so that you have taqwa. Taqwa for what? Taqwa so that when you implement any of these things, you have you fear Allah Azza wa Jal from within. Similarly about the Hajj, وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ If you glorify Allah Azza wa Jal, this creates taqwa in your hearts. Why? Why do I need taqwa for? What is it that Allah Azza wa Jal, when He wants you to, be, to have taqwa, for what? So that when you have rules and regulations, you do them properly and correctly. Otherwise, why do I need your taqwa? If you cheat me in trade, if you make riba, why do I need your taqwa? The taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal wants to fall in your heart so that you can implement these things. So this system, now, of Islam, that is all geared to create this, what we call justice. In fact, some did say, oh, brothers, you summarized all of Islam in one word. You have all this Allah, believe in Allah, in the messenger, in the Quran, in the hadith, systems, moral values, ibadat, to get justice? Where do you get this from? Oh. I got from the Quran. Reading Surah Al Hadith, where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ We have sent messengers, including Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Very clear sign. وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابِ Quran. We gave them the Quran. وَالْمِيزَانِ Together with all of this, there is a scale. You have the Quran, you have the Hadith, you need a scale to be able to judge. Why? What for? So that people can live in justice. Allahu Akbar. This whole thing. Messengers, Quran, Bayinat, Mizan, all of this. Political system, social system, legal system, moral system, all this. So that we live in justice. And then we say, oh, we have to try to build a just system. How is it possible that you can build a just system or provide the world with justice or say, or say I have a just model, a model that can bring you justice if you don't have all those things that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about in Surah al hadith But then, even in Surah al hadith Allah Azza wa Jal pointed our attention to something more. Yes, I gave you messengers. Yes, I gave you the books. Yes, I gave you the visa so that you stand in justice. But, وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيثِ فِيهِ بَعْسٌ جَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ And I also gave al-hadith. Al-hadith, the iron is a symbol of power. It's 
general power, without the power of a state, supported by armies, by power, by khalifa, by imam, by, by, by all of this structure, all of this is nonsense, will not work. Yesterday, when I was talking to Brother Ataul Haq, the prominent economist, he worked about 15 years in the Islamic University in Malaysia. He wrote many books. He asked me a question about my book, Fall of Capitalism and Rise of Islam. Where is this economic system that you put, you talked about in this book? Where is it implemented? Show me one place. I told him zero. None. Zelch. Absolutely. It's not implemented anywhere. He said, then what's the use of it? I said, well, you are forgetting a component an economic system, or a social system, or a political system, or a legal system, which is qaba, or a moral system, even piety, etc. All of it will not function until and unless there is a supervision and a power behind it, which is called the state. Whereas then we don't have a state. Then he asked me, what happened to the state? Oh, collapsed in 1924. There was a guy under the name Mustafa Kemal, falsely they call him Atadon, falsely. Because Atta means the father of, he's not the father of Turks, he's the enemy of Turks and the Arabs and all the Muslims. Came and destroyed the Khilafah of the Muslims. Of course, we bear responsibility. Our fathers, grandfathers, great grandfathers, they bear responsibility. But nevertheless, that did happen. Somebody destroyed that state. From that on, that time on, nothing works. Nothing is working. You cannot even do the zakah, which is we give every day. Today we were in a discussion after the khutbah Jum'ah, we gave the details. How can we resolve poverty? Too tough. I pay zakah, but you don't pay zakah. I choose to give zakah to someone that I know, but I don't know the other one on the other side. You need a system. You need a system that can oversee all of these things. We don't have it. Now, why we don't have it? Oh, because it's too tough to make it. Arab revolutions, they made lots of revolutions, they failed. The deep state came back. U.S. intelligence came from beyond. British intelligence came from within. Everybody, they, they ganged against the, the will of nations, if you will. But they can gang against the will of nations if the will of nations or the will of the Ummah is not combined. Sometimes our will is not combined. My will is different than your will. You say, I will build a structure for Islam by increasing my prayer and dua. Oh, God bless you. May Allah accept your dua. But that doesn't work. It didn't work. It has not been working. Something more needs to happen. Something more. I have spoken too long. I apologize. This has been longer than I wanted to say. But brothers, I want to leave you with something that what you have within your heart, what you have within the book that each and every one of you has copies of at home, within those, within, within the very few ayat that you recite every prayer, Within Al-Fatiha alone, that you recite 17 times every day, there is a call for us to stand up, to stand up and to provide guidance, not only for us, but for the rest of the world who are waiting for us. Every single minute that passes, a Muslim or a non-Muslim sleeping hungry, some of us will bear responsibility. Every single minute that a blood of Muslims spilled without a justified reason, whether it's in Yemen or in Syria or in Libya or in Iraq or in Saudi Arabia or in Bangladesh or in Myanmar or, or wherever. Some of us, if not all, will be held responsible for that. Every time we get closer to a catastrophe in the virtual economy of the world, and we cannot provide a model so that people can escape to, some of us will be hit responsible. 
I hope and I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to understand our responsibilities and to stand up for that responsibility because we are in charge. Jazakumullahu khair. Jazakumullahu khair. And I apologize for being wrong. Assalamu alaikum.